Hello, this is Professor Kupke, and this is our first mini online lecture focusing on the nervous system, a new organ system for us this semester. Um, you'll notice that this PowerPoint is divided into two parts. This first part focuses primarily on the tissue in our nervous system and some general concepts of our nervous system. And then when you come into class, we will be focusing on part two of the nervous system, which talks more about how the nervous system generates nerve impulses and how these nerve impulses send information to and from different parts of the body. So we're looking at chapter 12 in your textbook. Um, we're looking at exercise 16 in your lab manual, so both those would be good resources to reinforce some of the material we'll be covering not only in these online mini lectures but also the material we cover in class. So this slide talks about the general functions of our nervous system. So again, this is a new organ system. We finished the muscles, now we're moving into the nervous system and we spend most of the remainder of the semester talking about the nervous system. So general functions of our nervous system include maintaining homo homeostasis. So remember what homeostasis is, maintaining internal conditions in our body, making sure that our body is going to run and function at normal levels. So these normal levels could include hormone levels or temperature or fluid levels or electrolyte levels. So a lot of that homeostasis is largely controlled by your nervous system. So we use nerves to maintain internal conditions. Uh, in order to do this, Nerves need to be able to sense changes in our environment, both in our external environment, but also to monitor internal environments. Uh, the nervous system has to interpret this information. So if we're monitoring hormone levels, our nervous system needs to know what the normal range would be. But then also transmit information from say the brain or spinal cord to effectors. So effectors are what the nervous system controls. So an effector could be a skeletal muscle because we know that nerves control skeletal muscles. The effectors could be an organ, could be the stomach, could be the heart, could be the liver. So effectors are any organs that are controlled by nerves. And almost all organs are controlled by nerves. Second major function is that it works together with our endocrine system. So remember what the endocrine system is all about. That's all about hormones. So hormones are chemical messengers. They send information from one organ and tell another organ to do something. So does the nerve system. Nervous system just uses neurons and nerve impulses where the endocrine system uses hormones. But they work together to coordinate all body functions. So if you were to look at a function in the body, let's say it is the stomach. Stomach is regulated by both the nervous system and hormones. If you look at the heart, well the heart has an internal electrical circuitry but it can be that up or slow down using nerves. There are a number of hormones that affect the heart, primarily speeding up the heart, like epinephrine or adrenaline. So most organs respond to both nerves and horm hormones in order to be regulated. Third function is something that we usually contribute our brain um, behavior. So we be behave because of our brain. We have memories because of our brain and we move because our brain tells us to move. Uh, so that I think we already know is largely nervous system. Study of the nervous system is neurology. So we're going to be neurologists. Uh, again, for most of the remainder of the semester, we're going to be studying the nervous system, whether it be controlling organs or interpreting visual information or sensing our environment, touching or objects. So neurology is the branch of medicine that studies not just the normal function of the nervous system but also disorders of the nervous system. 
So if we go back, I'm sorry, if we take a step back, this image here shows some of the basics of our nervous system. Notice that it is divided into what's called the CNS, or central nervous system, which includes your brain and spinal cord, as well as the PNS, or peripheral nervous system, which is everything other than your brain and spinal cord. So we're looking at nerves, cranial nerves. Cranial nerves go to and from the brain. Spinal nerves go to and from the spinal cord. Uh, ganglia, which we'll talk more about later in the semester, are basically masses of nervous tissue that produces kind of a swelling of tissue. Uh, there's an enteric nervous system, which controls your GI tract, like the small intestine. Uh, we have sensory receptors in the skin, monitoring our external environment. So these are all things that we're going to be touching on here or there. Let's next take a look at this figure. This is a figure that we're going to be coming back to quite often. We're going to be adding things to it. We're going to be using this as kind of our basic building blocks of the nervous system. And you can look at this and follow it by numbers. So let's do that. So number one says there's sensory receptors. These sensory receptors are going to respond to a stimulus. So that stimulus could really, in theory, be almost anything that disrupts our homeostatic mechanisms. So in here, it's a it's attack, right? Very disruptive, painful, and we want to be able to know that there's possibly attack sticking in the bottom of our foot, because if we didn't know, if we didn't sense that pain, that would leave an opening for organisms to penetrate into the body. So we need to be able to sense our environment. Again, not just external environment, but also internal environment. So here is a pain. Uh, in order to interpret that, we have sensory neurons. So in blue is a sensory neuron. So we see that as number two, sensory neuron. Notice the arrows. The arrow is the direction in which the information is traveling. So information in this context is impulses, nerve impulses, electrical activity traveling down this neuron. So this is a sensory neuron. So it's a single cell. So you can imagine this blue line here is a single cell called a neuron transmitting nerve impulses from where it was detected using these little receptors ultimately into the spinal cord so this is a, just a section of the spinal cord. We'll notice where this neuron is going to then stimulate another neuron called an interneuron, which is basically a neuron that decides where the information needs to go. Uh, it's considered kind of the integrating center. Integration means we're interpreting stimulus. We're trying to, we're, the integrating center of our nervous system figures out what we're going to do about this. And basically this interneuron has determined that we should stimulate this red neuron, which is known as the motor neuron, kind of like a somatic motor neuron. And in fact, this is a somatic motor neuron because it's going to what looks to me like a skeletal muscle. And that would make sense because if we're stepping on a tack, guess what we want to do? We want to lift our foot off that tack, and that requires a skeletal muscle. So this red neuron is a motor neuron. It's sending its action potentials to what we call the effector, which is right here. The effector is a muscle, or it could be a gland, that responds to the motor neuron. Again, it looks like a skeletal muscle here, but it could be some sort of gland. Maybe this stimulus here wasn't pain, but maybe it was temperature. And this neuron detected that temperature as being hot. And now that effector might just as well have been a, a sweat gland responding to that temperature so we can cool the body. So this is a figure we need to be comfortable with. We need to be able to go through it, understand the process that, that's going on here. Uh, we can boil it down into basically three functional categories. The first one is sensory. 
So our nervous system has to be able to sense changes. And we often refer to that as stimuli or stimulus. Again, that stimulus or that change could be internal or it could be external. Then there's an integrative function. The integrative function is to analyze, right? Interpret, figure out what in the world are we going to do about this stimulus. And that's done by these interneurons. Interneurons are found in your spinal cord, like this one here in purple, or in your brain, trying to make decisions as to what to do about the stimulus. And then there's motor function. Motor function is the neurons that are controlling the effectors. So in essence, interneurons have to tell specific motor neurons in order to get the effectors to do what we want them to do. So that's kind of the natural progression in which our nervous system works. Sensory, integrative, motor. And then finally those motor neurons control the effector organs. So let's take this a little bit step a little bit further. Again, here's what we've just talked about just in a different format. We have some sort of a stimulus. The stimulus is detected by a sensory receptor. Those re sensory receptors are found on sensory neurons, but here we call them afferent neurons. Afferent means going towards something. So sensory neurons are called afferent neurons because the information is going towards this, the central nervous system. So sensory neurons you can, be, can be called sensory or afferent. Sensory is more of a functional name because it's sensing a stimulus. Afferent is more of a directional term as to which where the information is headed. So then the CNS interprets, right? Large number of interneurons interpreting what this sense might mean. Then we have an efferent neuron. So efferents would also be known as motor. Again, motor is more of a function, functional term. Efferent is more of a directional. Efferent means exiting or away from something. And we're moving away from the CNS. And then your nervous system controls maybe other nerves. So we might control nerves by using other nerves. Or we might be controlling glands. Maybe it's a sweat gland. Maybe it's a digestive gland. Or we are controlling muscles. Maybe it's a skeletal muscle. Maybe it's a smooth muscle. Or maybe it's cardiac muscle and we're trying to speed up the heart. So the nervous system has two primary divisions, the CNS, which is brain and spinal cord, the PNS, which is everything else. The central nervous system contains primarily interneurons as well as neuroglial cells, which are other supporting cells, which we're going to be talking about in our next video. Peripheral nervous system are these afferent and efferent neurons, which are sending information into or away from the central nervous system. So again, sensory or afferent and motor or efferent. This slide is going to be covered in our next mini lecture. So when we get to the next mini lecture, we're going to learn about neurons versus neuroglial cells, which are supporting cells of our nervous system.